Hello guys, today we're going to look into a GT letter, right? So we'll just start. You have just read an article in a national newspaper which claims that the town centers in your country all look similar to each other. So you've read an article. In this article, they have said the town center, the town, the village you are living in, it looks same, right? So you don't agree with this opinion. So you have to write a letter to the newspaper editor. So the first thing we have to look into this is the newspaper editor. So you do not know this person, the newspaper editor. So this letter is going to be a formal letter. So the first thing you have to look is, is it formal letter, informal or semi-formal, right? So when you're writing to a person who is at a higher status or anyone who you do not know, right? So you use a formal letter, formal tone. So in this letter, what you have to say? The three parts. The first part is say which points in the article you agree with. First, you say what you are agreeing to, then explain in which ways your town center is different, right? So last, you uh, offer a guided tour to your town to the right. Okay, so the format I will, uh, I have also uploaded the images for the format of the letters, various letters. But if anyone needs, I can personally also send you a message, right? So if anyone needs uh, the letter uh, formats, they can message, they can DM, right? So uh, we'll start. Always you have to remember, most people ignore this thing. You have to write in a formal letter, dear, dear, not respected, dear, dear sir or madam, not slash, sir or madam, right? So then it will be followed by a comma. So this is called a salutation. Right. So after that, you have to leave a line. If you are giving an online exam, then also if an offline exam, then also you have to leave a line, a full line, a single line you have to leave. Right. So first we'll talk about the uh, first part. Right. So the first part will be uh, what you are trying to write. So what you're writing to, what you're writing to and what you are writing for, right? So um, you can start with like, I am writing this letter, right? For X and Y reasons, you can start with that. Or I recently read an article in your newspaper that claimed that town centers in our country, in our country means to say the country, uh, uh, um, they are living, both of them, right? So all look the same. While I agree to some part, what you are agreeing to is that there are places which are similar in characteristics, right? I would like to offer some counterparts, counterpoints, right? So counterpoints will be that there are many places which are actually different. Drawing on my personal experience, drawing on my personal experience means according to me, in my opinion, of living in a unique town, that you are now emphasizing that you are currently living in a town which is like unique, which is different. Okay, so now we'll start with the bullet points. So the first bullet point is what you are agreeing to. So I agree that some towns look similar. Due to the prevalence of what is the reason behind it. So chain stores and franchises, right? So you have to learn these spellings. Chain stores and franchises, which can create a sense of homogeneity. So homogeneity means when something looks same, when a place looks same. So this is a vocabulary. This is a very important word. Homogeneity, right? So however, then I will we'll write, however, I believe that there are still many unique towns, centers, 
throughout the country that offer a distinct character and identity distinct means different something which is not the same character and identity means something that has value so they are not same we are talking about that so this is a very good vocabulary distinct character and identity so then we'll write these Town centers are often found. Where are they found? In smaller towns and villages. Which part of the towns or which part of the country are generally not looked into as much as the city centers are looked into? So they are smaller towns. That is why we are emphasizing here the smaller towns and villages that have managed to preserve the historic architecture and local businesses right so these uh, villages and towns they are not modified so since they are not modified so they have the traditional or vintage look that is what we are trying to say here right so now we are going to talk about our town how is it different so in particular means you have to emphasize that what we are talking about now I would like to highlight the town center of my own town. Now, so town center, he is talking about his own town's town center. So it stands as an example of a unique and vibrant community. So unique and vibrant community where a lot of uh, unique people, different cultures uh, live, right? Different ethnic groups, people with different ethnic groups, they live together. So we are talking about that community. So our town center boasts, boasts means that they are showing off. So boasts a range of independent shops, businesses, many of which have been passed down through generations of families. So these shops, these independent businesses are being passed on from family to family, right? So the buildings in the town center reflect the local heritage. So what are these town centers building for? They reflect local heritage and hosts a range of community events. So there are many organization of many uh, events, you know, many programs throughout the year, which includes farmers, weekers, market, whatever you can uh, write weekly farmer market or anything like a, a, a beekeeping a festival or anything, you can write anything it is upon you, right? So annual music festival, anything you want to write, you can write here. Okay, so you are just trying to say how is it different from the other parts, right? So we have explained it properly here. Then in the last, you will summarize the thing like I would like to invite you. The third part will be third bullet point will be like I would like to invite the writer of the article, the person who has written the article to come and experience it on the first hand that what is happening. So he can also understand that what he has written is not actually true. So we have written, uh, you have to be very formal and very, very polite, right? So I would be, this would happen. I must, you cannot say I must, this must happen. You cannot uh, authorize uh, anything, right? So I would be happy to help them uh, with a guided tour of the town, right? So which would highlight, what will it highlight? Unique features and why, how we can set it apart from the other towns, right? So I believe that by experiencing a town center like our first hand, so they will understand that it is diverse and has a character to it. So we've changed the way it, it was written before. So diversity, diversify, you can write a lot of words. You can change the word form itself from a noun to a verb, from a verb to an adverb, right? So that you can do the character to be found in town centers across the country than they originally thought, right? So then you'll again write the closing statement. Thank you for considering my perspective, right? And a full stop will be there. Then salutation, your sincerely. Right? So you can also write uh, yours faithfully here. So it's a formal letter. You can write, uh, it is much better to write yours, yours faithfully. Yours faithfully, right? Then you will write a full name. 
Marcus James, whatever your first name and your last name. Right? So, write here uh, yours favorite. Right? Okay. So, uh, I'll wrap it up now. So, any problems with it, you can again DM. Right? Thank you for your time, guys.